Hello, everyone. Philosopher and pioneer conservationist John Muir wrote, when we try to pick out anything by itself, we find it hitched to everything else in the universe. This is an observation that is often cited as an early articulation of scientific and philosophical ecology. And Muir is correct. We live in a profoundly relational world where human behaviors, all our cultural practices, are connected not only to the physical world, impacting it and impacted by it, but to everything else as well. The study of deep relationships between humans and the environment occurs across a range of disciplines beyond scientific ecology, anthropology, eco-psychology, environmental ethics, environmental history, eco-feminism, just to name a few. All of the social sciences and humanities seek to understand relationships in a human context. We should also be putting business on this list. And one question we could be asking ourselves is this, how do our business practices, our self-reflection, our objectives, our strategies, and our actions function as part of a relational network that contributes to the entire ecosystem we inhabit, societal, natural, and the vital interaction of the two? How we answer this question may be an important factor in how we determine what is good for society, good for business. This has never been more important than now. 2020 has alarmingly reminded us of our own vulnerabilities and the vulnerabilities and shortcomings of our institutions in taking on a public health emergency and a crisis in equity and racial and social justice. As we work to overcome the isolation and fragmentation that stalk us today, any hope for genuine healing lies in how we re-examine the synapse of our connections to others and to the natural world. In November 2019, the Natural History Institute and the Biophilia Foundation co-sponsored a national conference in Sedona, Arizona called Reciprocal Healing, Nature, Health, and Wild Vitality. Over 100 scholars and practitioners in medicine, psychology, and the sciences gathered to explore the interrelationship between the health of humans and the health of nature, and the notion that what mends and invigorates one does so for the other, because both humans and their environment are part of one ecology. Business persons learn quickly and forget to their detriment the centrality of connection and relationship in their practices. A business is its own small ecological system of internal connections and relationships operating in the context of much larger systems. Organizationally, a business is the interplay of directors, managers, owners, and subordinates operating on what Henry Mintzberg calls the three planes of information, people, and action. On my office wall, I have a framed accountant's T scrawled by my father years ago on a faded yellow legal pad. Our strengths, reads the left-hand column. Our liabilities, reads the other. Each is connected to the other in a fluctuating balance, and together they comprise the whole of a business. Beyond a business itself is its extended network of connections and relationships, vendors, customers, consultants, associates, peers, competitors. It is the ecology of commerce. But there are many kinds of connection, of course. Partnership is a form of connection, so is competition. We are intimately connected in the red ocean of business. But my thinking today has to do with another form of connection, reciprocity. The history of the word reciprocal tells us that it has meant a number of things over the course of the last 600 years. Having an interchangeable character or relation, mutually equivalent and correspondent, for example, no one has ever put it much better than did the metaphysical poet John Donne in his 1625 Meditation 17. No man is an island, entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. So I place business in that kind of ecosystem, a tripart one comprised of society, the natural environment, and commerce. This is the place where the healing of one heals and benefits all where our actions produce material changes that replace isolation, division, and separation with genuine connection and affiliation. Business has a role in that. 
I grew up in a family business. My family operated a wholesale nursery, growing some 500 acres of palms and desert trees. I grew up hearing my father talk about himself as a businessman. According to him, that one fact explained everything there was about him. I always took it to be his fundamental sense of identity. But one day when we were talking near the end of his life, out of the blue, he said to me, you know, I'm not really a businessman. I'm an artist. I smiled because I suspected that all along. My father was in business because he enjoyed creating things, imagining them, bringing them into being. The challenge for 21st century business is to practice the art of reciprocal healing. What is good for society, good for business. Thank you.